My name is Jason Ahistis. I'm the carnivore curator here at Foster Rim Wildlife Center. Uh, we're actually here in Wolf Circle in our intensive management area at, at Fossil Rim. It's our area that was first built for red wolves in 1989. Um, it was our first efforts in the recovery program for red wolf. And we actually built five enclosures and we are currently using them for red wolves right now. We are one of the 43 institutions in captivity that hold red wolves, um, which is a population of about 230 animals. That release program started in 1987 where the first eight wolves were reintroduced to the wild and as of 2012 it was up well over 100. Um, recent years the population has dropped down to about 40 so our goal in captivity is to increase the population enough that we have the capability of releasing a large group back into the wild to maintain that wild population. When you think of other conservation efforts in the world and they're all overseas in Africa and Asia and Europe one of the biggest things about the red wolf is it's our species, it's, it's homegrown and we need to work on conservation efforts to save the species we have here in the states and this is, this is an opportunity to save that last true carnivore species that's indigenous to the United States. So they are truly an American species. The state of the red wolf and, and people not wanting them around, I think it's honestly a lack of education on the species in general. You know the big bad wolf is, it's, it's in our pop culture, it's, it's in stories, it's in cartoons, the wolf is always the bad guy. And, and in reality, the wolf is not the bad guy. Humans are the bad guy. They're not the big bad species. They're, they're not the big bad wolf. They're, they're very quiet, secluded, stick to themselves type of species um, that play a, a great role in our ecosystem. And we need to educate people to get back to that and understand what they actually do.